Cool. <laughs> cool. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you so much for being here on this afternoon uh, on, on a lovely sunny Sunday. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about why pizza means I love you. Uh, my name is Dr. Sarah Wiseman and I'm a lecturer of computer science at Goldsmiths University. Uh, and that's why you should listen to my opinions on emoji because I've got doctor in front of my name. It's got nothing to do with emoji, but don't worry about that. So I'm going to start this talk like all good talks should in that I'm going to quote from the dictionary. So, uh, I'm not sure if all of you know this, but uh, every year, Oxford English Dictionary choose a word of the year. They choose it uh, in order to represent what was happening in that year. What really, uh, in one word, tells you what was happening in that year. They're all really depressing, so get ready for these most recent ones. Um, they gave us vape and selfie and the increasingly useful post-truth and omni-shambles. Now... Can anyone tell me what the word of the year was in 2015? Yeah, someone can. Emoji. What? Are you saying it's the word emoji? Does anyone else want to have a go? Yes, what do you think it was? What? Or love. Very good, very good guessing. The, uh, the emoji, well, sorry, no. The word of the year in 2015, according to Oxford English Dictionaries, was laughing face with tears of joy. Um, Oxford English Dictionaries were very proud to announce their first pictograph. It was very cute. Um, now, why did they choose this emoji? Well, they chose it because the word emoji and the amount of emojis that we were using in 2015 was astronomical. It had seen an amazing rise in popularity. And they worked with the company SwiftKey to work out what was the most popular emoji that was being used that year. And it was laughing face with tears of joy. I can tell you that since 2017, it has stopped being the most popular emoji. I will let you all decide what on earth could have happened in the year 2016 to make everyone in the world less happy. <laughs> mm, anyway. Now, it's, it's absolutely appropriate that there should be an emoji word of the year because emoji is so, so important to us. Even if you don't like it, lots of people out there are using it. There are 60 million emoji used every day on Facebook. And I can tell you that with thanks to my friends at Cambridge Analytica. <laughs> now, 60 million is a massive amount and it's quite incredible, isn't it? I mean, it's incredible how relatively small that massive amount is because on Facebook Messenger alone, five billion emoji are used every single day. Emoji are here to stay and they matter to us. Did you know that you are twice as likely to open a marketing email if there's an emoji in the subject line? So the next time you do that, be aware that you are being gamed very seriously. But they're here, they're here, they're here to stay. We use 2.3 trillion emoji in 2016 on various messaging apps uh, across various uh, platforms. They're really, really important. Now, I probably don't need to tell you all of that. I'm sure most of you have used an emoji today, in fact. Uh, so I want to tell you about why this is important to me, me in emoji form. Uh, and to do that, I need to tell you a story. So I'm going to tell you a story about my friend. Uh, my friend wanted to buy herself a new house. Uh, as you all know, houses cost a lot of money, so she was saving for absolutely ages. She had done everything she could think of to save money. She had even moved in with her mum and dad. Uh, they will not thank me for representing them like that, so don't tell them I've used those emoji. Uh, and uh, she'd even done the, the uh, almost impossible thing of giving up avocado on toast. <laughs> and so after all of that work and all of the effort that she put in, I was absolutely thrilled when last year I got a text from her. It's finally happened. We exchanged on the house. She'd finally found this dream house. She'd been working so hard towards. She'd been saving. She'd been changing everything about her life. Finally, this had happened to her. I was thrilled. I was overjoyed. I was ecstatic. And so I responded in the only way I knew how. Yes. Yes, okay, that response, it turns out, was the same response she had. Um, <laughs> I hadn't really thought when I'd sent that reply. Now, that reply of carp streamers, it means something to me, and it means something to one other person on this planet who also happens to be in this room. Um, me and my sister, there she is, uh, me and my sister have been sending carp streamers to each other for a lot of years, and we cannot work out why we've been doing it, but it means I'm thrilled, I'm ecstatic, I'm overjoyed, this is the most fantastic thing that's ever happened, Why? So, 
I was sending a really positive message and she didn't acknowledge it. Neither did you all, so I'm quite offended. Um, but it made me realize, actually, there's this weird thing that me and Amy are doing. Amy is my sister, I'm gonna call her Amy. I'm gonna to forget to call her sister, but there you are, you know who she is now. There's this weird thing that we are doing. And uh, I wanted to know more about this. I've always known that me and Amy are special. My mum always tells us this. <laughs> But are we special enough that we're the only ones doing this? Are we the only ones out there that are using emoji for a different purpose, uh, just with one other person? So it, came, it gave me kind of two questions. One, do people repurpose emoji and use them for things they shouldn't? And two, are there people out there doing it with one other person to create a bond? So let's answer that first question, shall we? Are there people out there who are repurposing emoji? <laughs> yes. Obviously, obviously there are people that are using emoji that aren't uh, meant for their intended purpose. Now, what do I mean by intended purpose? Well, every year, the Unicode Consortium meet and they decide what new emoji we get. Uh, and they assign a name to each of those emoji. So for example, this emoji is called eggplant. Whereas most people in this room will know that it's an aubergine and we don't use the word eggplant. Um, no, I don't mean that. But anyway, they, they give them these names and um, that means that there's often a disconnect. It means that uh, we as users of these emoji, we never see those titles, we never see those names. We just see them in pictorial form, which often means that we, are, um, we give them our own meanings and we can assign them to something else. Now, the Unicode Consortium, they also get to decide on what new emoji we get. Uh, this year, they've created one for describing your EMF tent uh, in, the, in the nighttime. They've given us the chilly, freezing face. Um, but it, it means we get a lot of new emoji. We don't necessarily what all the name, know what all the names are. Now, I uh, have a question for you. I would like you to tell me, uh, does anyone know what this Unicode character is? U1F351. Does anyone want to have a guess? I'll tell you, it has a lot to do with when, in 2016, Apple ruined sexting. Does anyone else want to have a guess now? You all know it. It's the peach. It's the lovely peach. So in 2016, Apple users were furious. They were in uproar because Apple had ruined sexting for them. The way that Apple had done that is that they had taken their peach emoji, which has always looked like this, and they wanted to give it an update. They wanted to freshen it up and they wanted to redraw it. And so uh, for iOS 10.2, uh, they were suggesting maybe we need to draw these emoji in a different way. So they gave us peach looking like this. People were furious. Why were people furious though? Well, Emojipedia have done a study looking into the ways that people use the peach emoji. Uh, and it turns out that it's not that often used to mean the fruit, surprisingly. Um, it turns out that 4% uh, of the time, when people are using peach, they're meaning it in the sense of peachy keen and peachy cool and various things like that. 7% of the time, when they're using this emoji, they mean the fruit. Okay, that's good. That's still a lot of percentage left though, isn't it? 73% uh, of the time, when the peach emoji features on Twitter, in messages, anywhere, it's referring to a bum. Why is that? Well, technically, oh, it's because it looks like a bum. Sorry, I didn't have anything else. It looks like a bum. That's why. Uh, and so that's why people were really angry because this second incarnation, people didn't really think it did the job. It wasn't looking like a bum. And actually, uh, people were so annoyed, people were so angry, people made such a fuss of it that, hooray, hurrah, the uh, emoji was returned to its butt-like state. Um, and this, was, this is wonderful, but it actually acknowledges the fact that tech companies, big tech companies like Apple, are aware of and respect the fact that we as users of emoji add our own meanings onto them, that we aren't always going to listen to what they're called. Now, it's very likely that I haven't blown anyone's mind yet. Uh, you probably already knew about uh, the peach emoji. And it's so well known that we are assigning these different uses to emoji that companies are actually cashing in on it. Uh, this is something that Jurex... Uh, <laughs> I'm either going to surprise or disappoint or, con or make you happy here to say that this never actually existed. This was just a marketing campaign. Is there any size? I'm sorry if that was upsetting for you. Um, but uh, that just goes to show it's, it's such a universal thing that we do. We add new meanings to emoji. Lots of people do it now. But 
that only answers my first question. We've only seen instances of people repurposing emoji at a very universal level. Let's start getting smaller. Let's start thinking about people that use emoji when they want to hide or conceal a message. Who are people, we worried about doing this? Are we worried about criminals doing it? Terrorists, dodgy politicians? No, we're obviously worried about teenagers doing it. Um, and I'm about to show you a news clip from uh, an American TV show that is reporting on this very, very grave matter. Am I? Say kids are starting to use some as a secret code that we as parents can't necessarily figure out. Often it's a combination of emojis, like a face with a zipper along with, uh, should be parents next to that zipper. That would tell you, that would mean don't tell your parents about something. Now another one is a fox. You think that's a simple enough thing, a fox, right? But that can be a message to someone that you want to sneak out, sneak out of the house. A skull, arrow, and a flame. That can be saying to someone, I hope you die in a fire. Now, <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, don't feel bad if you don't know why that means that. This is really complex stuff, okay? Uh, Anyway, you can see how sensationalist and ridiculous it is, but this is something that people are in really concerned about and interested in because um, the, the older generation often feel like they're, being, uh, they're, they're having information concealed from them by using these type of emoji. Another thing that the older generation wrongly believe is that they can reach out to millennials and make them buy products and engage in things if they use emoji. So I'm just going to do a test with you. I just want to see if you're able to decipher what this emoji message means. My, my one clue to tell you is, like, don't read it like you've ever read any emoji in your life before. Does anyone have any guesses about what it could mean? Oh my gosh, the young person in the audience. Have a go. That's... That's okay. That was that was okay. That's going to be surprisingly prophetic in a moment. So uh, I, I do want to do it again so everyone can hear what you think. I hope that you get, um, that you put away all the bad stuff and start working out and getting more healthy and getting a more sexy bum for the first one and then for the bottom one, stop smoking. Good. It's always it's always a good message. Thank you very much for that go. <laughs> um, that's not quite. It and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if no one managed to get this one. This is I want want to fit in, but I don't want to smoke. Ah, oh, that's so hopelessly trendy. Anyone here who was anyone here who came in smoking is just going to give up now. I imagine because that's pretty effective as a message, isn't it? Um, this is this is an astonishing piece of marketing that uh, a company tried to release to, in order to engage millennials and young people in their messages about um, giving up drugs, giving up smoking. They thought, aha, we'll do it with emoji. That's how we'll get through to them. Now, uh, I'm not just making fun of this company. I mean, I, all props for giving it a go. It's always nice to try and uh, give a healthy message out to people. But I do want to show you uh, just how badly these types of messages can be interpreted um, because emoji don't always have a, a, a single meaning. So this came to my attention because of a linguist called Gretchen McCulloch. Um, she was sent this book to review, um, The Semiotics of Emoji, The Rise of a Visual Language in the Age of the Internet. And um, she has an absolutely incredible Twitter thread where she goes through this entire book and highlights a lot of very interesting parts of it. I will link to the Twitter thread at the end, but I just want to highlight this one that I brought up with you. So you'll remember what this meant. It said, I want to fit in, but I don't want to smoke. The author of this book, um, an academic, so obviously believed uh, they knew best, decided that it meant the following. <clears throat> I'm tired of drinking or doing things to fit in, like an ant. So I need to be strong and eat the right things and not take drugs. What on earth? 
I have no clue where that has come from. I want to fit in like an ant. This is absolutely astonishing. Uh, this is a published book, and this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the types of uh, translations that this author offers for emoji. But uh, my point being that sometimes we try to assign different meanings to emoji, and sometimes we are worried that teenagers are doing it, and sometimes we do not have a clue what we're saying. Anyway, so we've talked about the universal repurposing. We've talked about the case where everyone in the world knows what it means. Yeah, not everyone in the world. A lot of people know what it means. We've talked about this instance where uh, teenagers might know what the secondary meanings mean. But you know what? We still haven't got to carp streamers. We still haven't narrowed the group down small enough. And it's at that point that my research comes in because there was no one writing about this as far as I could tell. No one had talked about repurposing emoji with just one other person to create a bond. And so I decided to uh, run a research experiment. And I surveyed, um, I surveyed just over 70 people and asked them if they had an emoji that they reused and they gave a different meaning to when they were talking to just one other person. And I got some really fantastic and interesting results and I'd really love to share them with you now. So, the most commonly repurposed emoji uh, was the octopus. Lots of people rep reported using that for other meanings. Uh, some of them lovely, some of them Dark, darker, a lot darker. Um, so the, that, was, that was one of the most common ones we found. Um, the most commonly used pet name is penguin in emoji speak, which is very adorable. And if you do it, you're not special. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of people are doing it. Come up with something better. Um, so that was the most commonly used pet name. When people wanted to refer to a, a loved one in emoji speak, they would use the penguin. Um, now, lots of people reported using emoji for excitement. Um, these are results, all of them, from my survey, apart from the top one, because I asked my sister to fill in the survey, and she did not fill in the survey. So I know that I, I, I have personal experience, anecdotal experience, that people are using carp streamers to mean excitement. Other people reported using unicorns or this lovely game character to mean I'm excited, I'm happy. Um, this obviously wouldn't be a talk about emoji without sex. Uh, so other people reporting using emoji uh, for... Uh, to, to talk sexily with their partner, uh, someone using the goat, meaning horny. Uh, and this bottom one, someone reported uh, trying to find the emoji that was the least sexy that they possibly could. So, <laughs> lucky them, yay. Um, so, emoji used for sex. Uh, moving on to an other illicit things, um, some people reported using emoji because they wanted to hide what they were doing. They wanted to specifically hide the intent of their message from prying eyes, maybe the law. So, um, this person reported using this uh, bugle for drugs, because bugle, blow, it's a, um, a word for, for certain drugs. So emoji can be used to hide um, your messages when you think that they might be um, grabbed in the middle and you don't want people to see them. Lots of people reported using emoji because there's this lovely shared history. For a lot of people, um, an emoji can evoke a lot of things. Um, for, for a lot of people, an emoji can um, refer to a conversation that you had with someone. It can refer to a wonderful time you've had with someone. It can refer to a funny incident you've had with someone. Uh, and rather than having to say to someone, hey, do you remember that time we, which is can kind of feel clunky or uncomfortable at times. Uh, emoji offer us a way to uh, evoke something much, much larger than just the emoji itself. Uh, and they act as a gateway to a shared history to encourage you uh, to be able to talk about something with another friend. So if you wanted to, you know, if you were thinking of another person and you wanted to, to talk about that special time you shared, you can just send an emoji. And it's just a bit more elegant, I think, um, than kind of explicitly saying it in words. Other people reported using emoji um, because of the way that the emoji was drawn. This is very similar to what we do with peach. Peach is repurposed to mean bum because it looks like that kind of. Uh, and two people reported using um, uh, emoji in that similar way. So this top one, someone wanted to use a coffin emoji, but at the time they couldn't find one. And so they thought, ah, well, a person in a bath, that sort of looks like a coffin. I respect that. I think that's cool. Uh, and this bottom one, thinking face, this was reported uh, to be used um, by people to mean lesbian. Now, the reason being that in American Sign Language, that, that is lesbian in American Sign Language. And so it just so happens that the thinking face emoji can be used for that. There's no reason why it should look like that. You know, thinking face could be, you know, the 
Rodin De mm, could be a statue with a thinking face, <laughs> but it's not, it's that. And there's no reason, there's no link between thinking and uh, the term, the word lesbian, but there is a link between the way it's been drawn. So the way that emoji are drawn is really important. You might have realized this if you've ever um, texted your emoji cross-platform, often the grimacing face uh, can be misconstrued if you send it between an, I, uh, an iOS device and an Android. In one it looks quite happy and in one it looks quite unhappy. Um, so it's really important to understand how emoji are drawn. Uh, now, are the people using emoji uh, to create windings? Does anyone understand that one? They're referring to their local pub, the hatchet. <laughs> I'm not going to say it out loud. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny. A lot of people are using emoji because it's just simply funnier to do that. Now, uh, the British, we are not necessarily very good at saying what we mean and what we feel. So again, emoji are a really useful way of sharing our innermost, emoji, uh, innermost emojis. Oh, my word. <laughs> help, help, I've gone too far. Um, <laughs> a way of sharing our innermost emotions uh, uh, and, share, and saying what we really mean without having to be too um, like honest with ourselves. So lots of people are um, using emoji to mean I love you. Um, Someone used a horse. I'm not sure why they chose not to disclose that. But um, more than one person have, has a particular food type that they and their partner love. And so that means I'm thinking about that food, I love that food, and I love you. Which is why pizza emoji slice means I love you. Um, as a result of this paper, it's gone around my department. Now pizza emoji slice means anything to all of our colleagues. We just send pizza emojis willy-nilly all over the place now. But it used to mean something special to someone. Now, this is my favorite one, I would say. Sometimes people reported repurposing emoji just for an emotional connection. Sometimes it's really, really hard to talk to someone. Sometimes it's really hard to tell someone how you really feel. And sometimes you need to just tell someone an idea, a thought, a concept, and it doesn't really have words. Lots of people reported an emoji um, that they use just because talking is hard. And it's true, talking is hard sometimes. And talking is really hard when we only have one medium to do it, when we only have the written word. And I think that's really the beauty of emoji. When we talk, we don't just use our words, we use our tone, we use gesture, we use touch. And I think emoji give us that opportunity to add that texture to our digital written communication. They let us add another layer on top of what we're saying to another person. They let us tell them we're thinking about them, we let, they, they let us tell them that, that, that that other person is important to you without having to say it. And because sometimes, yeah, talking is hard. An emoji let us get through that while still creating that connection to another person and while still allowing a bond. So, uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you are into... Hang on, one second, one second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank Um, I will say, <laughs> um, I will say, yeah, the, uh, the paper, if you want to read more about that paper, um, can be found at that bit.ly link. Uh, and if you want to read that incredible, and I do use this word accurately, incredible Twitter thread reviewing that book, it can be found at the bottom um, link there. And I think we do have time for questions. Yeah, brilliant. So if anyone has any questions, uh, go for it. Thank you. Oh, just to say, if anyone has any emoji that they use in this way, please, please, please tweet me about them. I love hearing about them. Uh, hello. Uh, fr first of all, thanks for the talk. I'm a bit uh, crazy about emojis and Unicode. Uh, I had a, a little question regarding a thing you evoked during the talk, but I think didn't delve too much into. It's like uh, the emoji, the way we see the emoji is not a part of the standard. It's part of the fonts that is selected yeah. by the, the manufacturer. Do you think that in the future uh, there's going to be a problem with uh, uh, making the, the, the sense, the, the meaning of the images consistent across platform and across uh, manufacturers? And basically, do you think uh, that the images can become like another letters that the fonts doesn't matter for the interpretation? I, yeah, I think that's a really good question, and, and it's certainly one that I would, I, I don't have a, uh, a solution that I think would be appropriate. Um, what I, I, I think this, what this has highlighted is that it's important to whatever font you do choose for your emoji, that it remains consistent, that it doesn't suddenly change mid-use, and um, it, it's difficult. I don't think that the solution is to say everyone's um, 
thinking face needs to look like this or everyone's heart needs to look like this uh, because then I think we probably lose something. I think it's quite exciting that, that there are so many fonts and, cha and differences out there. Um, I think one of the conclusions of our paper was not everyone needs to change so that we all use the same standard font across all platforms, although, hey, it might come to that. I think the conclusion was everyone needs to be very aware that the way that emoji are rendered and drawn needs to be incredibly considered and thought through and cannot on a whim be changed because although it may still represent the same thing to a lot of people out there it may become useless and it may no longer be able to be used for that secondary meaning um, so i think that's a really good question and one i'm not sure where it's going to go but i'm intrigued to find out thank you uh is this on yep um, did you have any examples in the paper of regional uses of emojis such for things like festivals that might only be attributed to a particular nation or um, a particular village, and that people then talk to each other using emojis that represent that event? That's a really good question. I'm trying to think of them. Um, I can't think of any regional ones off the top of my head, but I, it's very frustrating. It feels like it's very close to the front of my brain that there is an example, but I can't remember that. Uh, I know that there's a lovely paper showing you that people in different regions use, use emoji in different ways, but um, in terms of your question, uh, I can't think of any regional examples, but I can think of community examples. So there were a few people that used emoji that were specific to a particular community. Um, now, forgive me if I, I may be about to misquote this, and I, have, I haven't read it for a while, but um, the uh, red flag symbol, or red... I'm about to mess this up. Sorry, someone tweet me and tell me the actual answer. I believe that's representative of something within the autism community, I think. Um, and so someone was using that to kind of create, to create bonds with other people in that same community. So yes, I saw community ones. I can't think of any geographical regional ones that I found. That's a good question. Thank you. Hi. Um, recently come across um, an effort to create a more open standard uh, called uh, Mutant. <clears throat> mutant standard, um, because I feel that sort of Unicode is almost moving too slowly and not being inclusive enough to cope with the evolution of of the language. And there's things like custom emojis in in Slack channels and things like that. How does that tension work? Do you think between the very uh, specification oriented uh, approach of Unicode and the natural evolution of language? Um. I, I don't know. That's, that's really interesting. I'd love to talk to you about that afterwards, actually, if, if we may. Um, I think probably the, the 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 beauty of this is that we can. It shows that we can still evolve and and take ownership of of the um, uh, the pictographs and the characters that we are given that are, that we are allowed to use in digital communication. And and I think this is good to show that we're still doing this because um, obviously with em emoticons we, we began doing that. We were, we, we were given these um, punctuation points that we were told were to tell you when to pause in a sentence or when you were able to conjoin sentences or finishing, finish a thought and we said, mm, no, nah, that's a smiley face. Uh, and so I think it's quite nice that we are still able that we are able to fight against that constriction. And I think probably uh, constraining, our, constraining people leads to more creativity often. So. Uh, Sorry, I've just waffled here. I would love to think about it. It's a really interesting question. I would love to talk to you more afterwards. Um, I think basically what I'm saying is, yay, we're creative. It doesn't matter how you constrain us. We will always represent what we want to say. <laughs> Hi, yeah. I'm uh, interested a little bit in your uh, ways of, of, of obtaining data for these sorts of things. Yeah. So a lot of manufacturers will go to lots of effort to record keyboard information in order to give better spelling or a better swiping usage or stuff like this. Mm. Is it possible to harvest data for these sorts of things or do you rely only on surveys? And so so are, are you asking would we be able to uh, s skim emoji use data? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, so that's not what I did. This was this was very qualitative, and it required people to reflect on those emoji. But um, there are a load of really fantastic, fantastic papers who have had access to data sets of millions and millions and millions of uses of emoji. And uh, I would recommend that you go to other experts who have done that type of uh, research because it is fascinating to see when you do have a lot of uh, data. Oh. Um, 
Are you aware of any research into the use of emoji by people who use screen readers? So blind people, visually impaired, where you know the image isn't going to come across and it's yeah. actually going to say peach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good... I mean, I, I don't have any experience of using uh, screen readers with emoji and I imagine it's a, a very unfulfilling um, uh, use case. I don't know any... Re I don't have any research about that, but that's a really... That's a really fascinating question, actually. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I will have a think about that. Thank you. Sorry, I can't give you anything more useful. That's really interesting. Do we... Should we... One, one more question, if anyone has one? No? Oh, one more down here. Cool. Also, I have... Just while I'm... I have a collection of emoji down here, if anyone brought any to add to my collection. Hello. They're making models. Okay, sorry. Yes. Um, I, one of the things I've noticed is different devices can sometimes render emojis slightly differently. One being that the, um, I think it's a grimacy smile on an um, Apple phone. Oh no, it's a smile on an Apple phone, can look like a grimace on an Android, and I've got majorly confused having a conversation. Um, is there any standardization coming in? I, 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 not that I'm aware of, and I think that's, well, that's similar to that question. I think it might be a good thing that there's not standardization. I think it has excitement and intrigue to things. Um, but there are lots of lovely Twitter stories of celebrities really badly misusing uh, that face, I believe, to report on stories that they found were very tense and touching. But on a, lot of emo on a lot of people's phones, it looked like they were reporting on this very grim story with a great big smiley face next to it. So it's quite amusing sometimes when they're misused. OK. Oh, sorry. Is that? Oh, OK. Cool. What's your opinion of the Emoji movie? <laughs> Um, I, it's very rare for research that I do to be of any interest or relevance to the blockbuster uh, movie industry. So I'm happy it exists, and I'm also happy that I haven't seen it, nor will I ever. Thank you. Thank you.